crowns to the monarchs on the face of the earth, shadow of God on earth, the sultan and sovereign lord of the Mediterranean and the Black Sea of Romania and Anatolia, of Karamania and the land of Rum, of Zulkadria, Diyarbakir, of Kurdistan, of Azerbaijan, Persia, Damascus, Cairo, Aleppo, of the Mecca and Medina, of Jerusalem, of all Arabia, of the Yemen, and many other lands, which my noble forefathers and my glorious ancestors, may God light up their tombs, conquered by the force of their arms, and which my august majesty has made subject to my flaming sword and victorious blade, I, Sultan Suleiman Han, to thee who art Francis, king of the land of France. <laughs> now, th this is what Shakespeare says about that in terms of the style that's been used in uh, the, the, the way Suleiman addresses Francois. Here is a silly stately sty style indeed. The Turk that two and fifty kingdoms hath writes not so tedious a style as this, him that thou magnifiest with all these titles, stinking and fly-blown, lies down here at our feet. Now, th th that is quite a satire. Now, uh, when Yildiz Kanter and I did a program in English uh, on uh, Turkish arts through the ages, at the Irish National Museum in Dublin some 15 years ago. Uh, there was a big audience, a very enthusiastic audience, I must say. Uh, but there was a couple sitting in the front row in the, in the middle, and a tall man and a tall la lady got up and walked out. And I didn't take notice of that much. But, but still, I, I was wondering why at that point that couple had left. Later, we found out that it was the French ambassador to Ireland and his wife, who took offense at the way Suleiman the Magnificent had been addressing their uh, 16th century King Francois. So those sensitivities still continue. And uh, we, we, d we don't mind, actually, what uh, Shakespeare says about us so many times. In King Lear, Edgar hands the Macho Turks a wonderful backhanded compliment. Wine loved I deeply, dice dearly, and in woman art paramour the Turk. Hamlet, as everywhere else, is the jewel in Turkey's Shakespearean crown. In the past 100 years, there have been 20 full dress productions and in 2004, a ballet version entitled Naked Hamlet. Nine different Hamlet translations have been published in book form. And as the creator of this marvelous e event, uh, Professor Errol mentioned in her exciting opening talk, a fanciful, eccentric film version of Hamlet in which Metin Arksan used a female Hamlet, Fatma Girik, nobody else. And uh, when Istanbul's city theater did its first Hamlet in 1914, exactly 100 years ago, there were seven men in the audience, one of them the hapless chauffeur of a rich spectator. Less than 50 years later, at the same theater, in 1964, Engin Jazar gave 170 consecutive performances. And the theater was always jam-packed, not a seat was empty, 170 times consecutively. And that type of record, consecutive performance 170 times, became a world record and was in the Guinness Book of World Records, which was broken six or seven years later by Richard Burton on Broadway. In Turkey, people from all walks of life enjoy Shakespeare, in Istanbul, there was a captain of a police precinct who was a great Shakespeare fan. There's an old story. In 1936, Tatar Refik, a two-bit actor with a touring company, was doing a six-week military service in a rural town. When he returned home, uh, a friend asked, how was military service, Refik? What did you do? Refik grinned, I did Shakespeare for six weeks. Astonished, his friend asked, how come, in the army? 
Refik told the story. Our colonel was a Shakespeare enthusiast. When he found out I was an actor, he made me do Othello twice and Hamlet once in 45 days. <laughs> now, who am I to play Othello, or especially Hamlet? But you have to obey orders. Aye, aye, sir. So I did Othello and Hamlet. <laughs> Our city theatre of Istanbul had a marvelous tradition. From 1927 on, throughout the 1930s, 40s, and 50s, of opening each season with a new Shakespeare production. This became, for young and old Istanbul residents, a brave new education in Shakespeare and in the theater. It was started by the great mentor of modern theater in Turkey, Mohsin Ertuğrul, who was a distinguished Shakespearean actor and director. He and his colleagues did not have it easy. Some of the leading critics were writing in the 1930s, even if playwrights like Ibsen, Schiller, and Shakespeare are geniuses or more powerful than geniuses, even if they are world-renowned, they are detrimental to our theater at this juncture. They are destroying our nation's refined taste. Destroying our nation's refined taste. They should be around to see how important Shakespeare is to us all over Turkey now. And Shakespeare pioneers in Turkey had to brave so much they had to be ingenious and innovative. Sadetek was a popular actor who headed a touring company. In 1946, I attended Sadetek's production of Hamlet at Kadıköy in Istanbul. Before the curtain was raised, Sadetek addressed the audience. Ladies and gentlemen, my fellow actors who play Horatio and the Ghost are unable to appear tonight due to illness. Obviously, Tech was not able to pay their salaries, so they were refusing to take the stage. So the veteran, veteran actor announced, with your permission, besides Hamlet, I shall play Horatio and the Ghost as well. <laughs> the curtain went up, act one, scene five, all three, Horatio, the Ghost, and Hamlet are supposed to be on the stage together. So the Tech speaks Hamlet's lines, runs out, wraps himself up in a sheet, and runs into the stage as Ghost. Exists as, exits as ghost, comes back as Horatio, in and out as Hamlet, ghost, Horatio. At that time, uh, Sad Tech is past 50, already slightly old for Hamlet and Horatio. Uh, also, he's on the fat side. He keeps running on and off the stage, out of breath, panting, his tongue hanging out. Despite all this, he manages to do his tri triple threat, a historic first. There's more to this. 25 years later, I was serving as Turkey's Minister of Culture. One day, my undersecretary said, Saadi Tek would like an appointment. By all means, I said, I'd love to see him. He came, he was now close to 80, but sprightly. Halfway into the conversation, I said to him, I wonder if you remember the occasion. 25 years ago, you had done three roles in Hamlet, even in the same scene. He paused for a moment, then he smiled and responded, of course I remember, he said, but it was even more interesting the following night, Horatio and the ghost in Shoab, also the queen and Ophelia failed to come. <laughs> Funny or serious, uh, uh, humorous or uh, m marvelously uh, impressive, uh, uh, Shakespeare is such a source of inspiration for ma many of the great writers of Turkey. Ebu uh, Ziyad Tevfik, Namık Kemal, who, who was a champion for, for the works of Shakespeare to be translated and, uh, and produced. Abdullah Hamid, who wrote Shakespearean tragedies sometimes, Sami Pashazade Sami, and even such great poets as Yahya Kemal and Ahmet Hashim, uh, and prose writers like Yaku Kadri and Halde Edip, uh, Abdurak Shina Sisar, Reshat Nuri, Payam Safa, were all influenced by Shakespeare in some ways or, or other. And, and then, of course, we had playwrights like uh, Turan of Lazolu, who produced a dozen plays entirely in the Shakespearean vein. Refik Erdogan also produced a m m marvelous verse uh, tra tragedy 
on uh, the great Justinian, which was done in Istanbul and Ankara in the 1950s and early 60s. So those were major influences, literary and theatrical. We Turks pronounced his name as Shakespeare or Shakespeare <laughs> or Shakespeare and always revered him. Othello for us was compelling. Traveling troops and circuses presented it for many decades as black man's revenge. Many actors achieved fame with names from Othello's cast like Iago Lutfi, Othello Kamil or Ruzza, Brabancho Fuat, Cassio Ahmet. Cir circuses did abbreviated and altered versions of it. Following the tightrope walking act, a fearsome Othello, face blackened with charcoal, used to come out gesticulating wildly, speaking his lines in a deep declamatory style and grandiloquently playing on the audience's emotions. Iago would get booed and cursed vehemently. Old ladies used to call out to Desdemona, you poor little thing, they are slandering you. <laughs> and as Desdemona and Othello were dying, most adults would weep profusely. Children would scamper about in fear. Circuses and touring companies gave countless Othello performances at hundreds of locations in Turkey through many decades. In view of that fact, it is safe to assert that Othello stands as the most performed play ever in Turkey's history of the theater. But it wasn't only the, the plays that caught our attention, the sonnets as well. Not marble, nor the gilded monuments of princes shall outlive this powerful rhyme, but you shall shine more bright in these contents than unswept stone besmeared with sluttish time. When wasteful war shall statues overturn and bronze root out the work of masonry, nor Mars his sword, nor war's quick fire shall burn the living, living record of your memory. Against death and all oblivious enmity shall you pace forth. Your praise shall still find room even in the eyes of all posterity that wear this world out to the ending doom. So till the judgment that yourself arise, you live in this and dwell in lover's eyes. Now listen to the same sonnet 55 in Turkish. Our language lends itself very well to Shakespearean poetry. Ne yaldızlı hüküm darantları, ne mermer, ömür süremez benim güçlü şiirim kadar. Seni pasaklı zaman pis bir mezara gömer, ama satırlarımda güzelliğin uşuldar. Savaşlar tepe taklak devirir heykelleri, çökersir boğuşanlar, yapı demez, sur demez. Ama Mars'ın kılıcı, cengin ateş selleri, şiirimde yaşayan anını yok edemez. Ölüme ve her şeyi unutturan düşmana karşı koyacaksın sen. Yeryüzünü mahşere yaklaştıran çağların gözünde bile sana bir yer var. Övgüm seni çıkarttıkça göklere. Dirilip kalkıncaya kadar mahşer gününde yaşarsın şiirimle sevenlerin gönlünde. Such is the euphony, the music of the sonnets. Poetry is melody. Music is paramount in Shakespeare. We heard bits of uh, Purcell before the program started this, this, this morning, uh, Shakespeare time music. So, so beautiful, so touching. And uh, th that music still plays a major role in the way Turks are enamored of the bard. Shakespeare said, the man that hath no music in himself, nor is he not moved with concord of sweet sounds, is fit for treason, stratagems, and spoils. The motions of his spirit are dull as night. Richard III is such a man, an unadulterated villain. He annihilates countless human beings. Near the end of the tragedy, he has become afraid of himself. What do I fear? Myself? There's none else by. Richard loves Richard. That is, I am I. Is there a murderer here? No, yes, I am then fly, what, from myself? It is as if there's a stirring in Richard's conscience. Does a monster like him possess a conscience? He denies 
and defies it as a sickness. Let not our babbling dreams affright our souls. Conscience is but a word that cowards use, devised at first to keep the strong in awe. Our strong arms be our conscience, swords our law. Richard III desperately decides to flee and shouts, A horse, a horse, my kingdom for a horse. As some of you may know, there's a funny story about this. In the 19th century, the Irish actor Barry Sullivan was a well-known Richard. When he was screaming, a horse, a horse, a man in the audience shouted back, we have no horse, will you take a donkey? <laughs> but Barry Sullivan immediately retorted, yes, certainly, why don't you step up on the stage? Pity we know so little about Shakespeare's life, or even exactly who he was. Shakespeare's scholarship is virtually an industry with thousands of studies published in scores of languages. The Shakespeare identity crisis is truly spectacular. So many claims and arguments have been and are still being advanced. One of the earliest insists that the real author was the renowned philosopher, essayist, and statesman Francis Bacon. Another argues the distinguished playwright Christopher Marlowe wrote all the plays and the sonnets. Another speculation holds that Edward de Vere, 17th Earl of Oxford, used the pen name of Shakespeare. Maybe, says another, the Earl of Rutland used the code name of Shakespeare, or the real bard was an Irishman called Patrick O'Toole. Even Muammar Gaddafi once argued 